Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and today we are continuing with the Srimad Bhagavatam playlist and we saw very beautifully that how should we establish a spiritual connection you know, by being humble and submissive and by this the disciple gets all the uh, favors from the Guru and Today we will discuss the next verse, the ninth verse from the first canto, first chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And this is a very important verse because this will tell us how to gain spiritual knowledge easily. Alright, so many times people say that spiritual knowledge is very difficult, which is indeed very true because we are very much engrossed in matter. So, how to get spiritual knowledge easily, even though it's not easy, but how to get it easily? All right, so there you go. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. The shloka from the first canto, first chapter, the ninth shloka. All right, Tatra Tatra. Jaya Suman Bhavata Yad Vinish Chitam Pumsam Ekantaha Shreyas Tannaha Samasitum Arhasi. So, who is speaking these shlokas? The sages headed by Shonak Rishi, the Rishis who are sitting in Naimisharanya forest. They are speaking before they spoke about Sut Goswami, who was about to narrate. The Srimad Bhagavatam, which he heard from Sukhdev Goswami, who heard it from the great sage Vyasdev, <clears throat> who is the compiler of all the Vedic scriptures. <clears throat> the translation of this shloka is as follows Please, therefore, being blessed with many years, explain to us in an easy, understandable way what you have ascertained to be the absolute and ultimate good for the people in general. Wow. Let's read it again. Please, therefore, being blessed with many years. So who is blessed for many years? Sudh Goswami. Explain to us in an easily understandable way. Not explain. Explain easily by which we can understand what you have ascertained to be the absolute and ultimate good for all the people in general there you go now we go to the purport in bhagavad gita worship of the acharya is recommended now who is an acharya acharya is one who practices and sets an example the word achar means to practice. In Bhagavad Gita, worship of the acharya is recommended. Where does Krishna say this? Tadviddhi pranipate na pari prasne na sevaya upadekchanti te gyanam gyani nastatva darsinaha. This is the shloka where Krishna says that inquire submissively and render service to the Guru. And from there, you will get spiritual knowledge. Tad vidhi pranipatena pari prasnena seva and enquire submissively. Upadek chanti te gyanam gyani nas tattva darshina. Tattva darshi means one who has experienced the absolute truth, who is Krishna himself. So there you go. Whenever we find references in scriptures about some other quote or some other scripture, we should always try to think. Where in which shloka is it mentioned? So, for example, here it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, worship of the Acharya is recommended. And you may, we may be thinking, where does Krishna say, say this in the Bhagavad Gita? So, therefore, I would recommend if you are watching this Bhagavatam playlist, you can also watch the Bhagavad Gita playlist which I have every Monday. So there also, if you watch both parallelly, you will get a better understanding of both of them. The Acharyas and Goswamis are always absorbed in the thought of in thought of the well-being of the general public. 
especially their spiritual well-being. Spiritual well-being is automatically followed by material well-being. The Acharyas therefore give directions in spiritual well-being for people in general, foreseeing the incompetence incompetencies of the people in this age of Kali or the iron age of quarrel. The sages requested that Sud Goswami give a summary of all revealed scriptures because the people of this age are condemned in every respect. The sages therefore inquired of the absolute good, which is the ultimate good for the people. Absolute good means spiritual good. <laughs> the condemned state of affairs of the people of this age is described as follows. So, uh, let's just read the translation of the next shloka. We will not discuss it now. But this is to show why they are requesting Sudh Goswami to speak it in a way that uh, they or we can understand it easily. All right. So the next shloka, which we will discuss in the next video in detail, is one of the most important shlokas of the Srimad Bhagavatam. All right. So this shloka is like this. Prayena paushya sabhya kalava asmin yuge jana manda sumanda matayo manda bhagya hi upadrita. It's a very famous shloka. O learned one, in this iron age of Kali, men have but short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. Ah, my mind is disturbed. <laughs> Everything is there, but still I am not happy. Well, so that shloka we will discuss the next time. But because of these qualities of the age of Kali, Kali Yuga means two traits, quarrel and hypocrisy. Everybody is quarreling these days. You know, in YouTube, Facebook, you can see. Uh, in YouTube, if you go below videos, you will you know, find hate comments. You will see you know, that people are insulting each other. You know, they are blaspheming each other, abusing each other, you know, using nasty words. You, know. you can go to Facebook and you will see you know, people from one political party is criticizing, insulting you know, the other uh, political, uh, the followers of the other political party. You know, people from one company is insulting the others. People from one technology field is insulting the other technology field uh, representatives. Yes. And there is quarrel and then there is hypocrisy. Kali Yuga means two things. Quarrel and hypocrisy. Hypocrisy means what you say and what you do are not the same. It's totally different. It's the opposite actually. Alright. So there is no integrity. There is no accountability. So what you say that you don't do and what you did that you'll never say. <laughs> In fact, I remember once uh, my guru was telling one day, imagine, the, imagine there was a machine that could take an x-ray of not of our body or our internal physical organs of our mind you know, and then place it in front of everybody. Imagine what would be our situation. Not all the X-rays, only one X-ray of any day in this life. Just imagine what will happen. All the, everything, everybody will see everything. Yes, what we are thinking about ourselves, what we think about others, how much we like others, how much we hate others, how much we are envious of others, how much we are jealous. Yes, everything will come out. So, it's a very interesting thing he said. Imagine every, somebody sees your X-ray, what will happen? You know? So, and at the end, as the next shloka says, you know, the mind is always disturbed. And Kali Yuga people, unfortunately, they have very short attention span. So many times when I make these videos, you know, like for example, uh, people tell me sometimes that. Oh, why are you wasting time speaking unnecessary thing? You know, come to the point, you know, go to the point to speak about the topic. Don't say things here, there. And then I'm like, if I'm speaking about something else before speaking about the topic, it means you need to understand that. That is why I speak. But then 
most of the people who write like this, they they do not have patience to even hear what anybody is speaking. All right, so so there's lack of patience, there's lack of tolerance. Anything which somebody says which we don't like or which we don't think is good or bad or correct or wrong, we will blast that person immediately on spot. I disagree with what you say. In fact, uh, I was seeing a video uh, on YouTube. Um, there was a very famous uh, channel of English, you know, to learn English. So somebody had forwarded me that video. So I saw in that video, you know, there are like some phrases, some statements which are not actually from English, you know, which are not actually from Britain or UK or, you know, England or London, whatever you say. Now, one of the phrases was, you know, this very frequently quoted uh, verse, Shoka today. <laughs> it is, you know, with due respect. Have you heard, have you seen this? Or have you heard people quoting like this? With due respect, you are totally disgusting. <laughs> so with due respect is said before you insult somebody. All right. But that is con that's contradictory. You, you cannot insult somebody who you respect. And if you insult somebody, you cannot respect. That, that can't happen. So people are hell-bent on proving to everybody else that they are superior to others. So that is the situation of the people of Kali Yuga. And therefore, in this age, because there is no patience, zero patience, zero tolerance, unfortunately, therefore, it is not possible for us to read the Vedic scriptures, you know, the Vedic canon ourselves. It is simply not possible. We have to approach a bona fide authorized guru. Only when the guru explains to us, we, we will understand. Otherwise, imagine if this translation and purport was not there. Imagine reading this Sanskrit by yourself. What would you understand? Nothing. At least I would not understand anything. I don't know about scholars of Sanskrit. And even if they understand the literal meaning, but will they understand the essence and the context? I doubt highly. I don't think anybody will understand. But because these purports and these translations are given, somebody is written and explained. That is why we can actually know what the sages in Naimi Sharani are talking about. Right? So, the easiest way to gain spiritual knowledge is to hear from the Guru. If the Guru because the Guru can tell us in a way according to our own level. Okay? The Guru can tell us uh, in a way that we can understand. And we may be thinking sometimes that why is the Guru saying like this? Why is the Guru saying like that? Ah, this microphone. Hope it is connected now. There you go. Now I hope the sound is better. So many times uh, we go to some guru and then the guru tells, you know, not some, any guru, I mean, some bona fide guru. And uh, the guru says something and we are like, oh, I don't think uh, this applies to my life. This is relevant to me. But you will see when you try to apply the principles which your guru has told, then you will always see in some, some area of your life, there is an indication that there, that your life is changing. Your life is getting transformed. Right, so we should never undermine the words of the gurus, and therefore, it's written here the sages have requested Sudh Goswami to give a summary of all revealed scriptures because the people of this age are condemned in every respect. The sages therefore inquired of the absolute good, which is the ultimate good for the people. The condemned state of affairs is described in the next verse, of course. All right. And therefore, it is highly essential that on a regular basis, we hear from our Guru. Otherwise, our spiritual practices will be very shallow. You know, we, we, we will do, but uh, we will have no confidence. We will have no faith. We will just be doing. For example, I know so many people who will, you know, chant mantras and, you know, they're just like sitting in a room in a corner and just doing it. And they, they have no connection with God. They don't feel anything. All right? Why, why is that? Because, you know, they are just going to Google or to some, you know, some 
some other fancy person and you know just going and asking and then somebody is going and giving some mantra you know do this do that but it is not coming from an authorized uh, tradition from the parampara it is not coming and then you have also not established a relation with your guru personal relation is very important personal relation does not mean uh, superficial uh, interactions like our friends have sometimes you know, superficial interaction. Hey, what you like? You know, I like this, you like that. Ah, we will eat this. It's, that's not a personal interaction. That's not the relationship which we should have with our gurus. When I say personal, it means we should be able to ask the questions to the guru in a way that uh, that reflects our own personal situation. And then the guru gives us personal guidance that, okay, this is the scriptural principle. and for you, you have to apply it in this way. This is your level and this is what is expected. So you have to be somewhere here, somewhere in between. And that also the guru has to decide and tell you that, okay, this is what you are doing and this is what you are supposed to do. So now you should do this. You should do this much. And whatever the guru says, we must follow. Because the guru is realized in all the scriptural truths so the guru exactly knows what we need where we need when and how much and what not also not only the do's he also knows the don'ts all right so if we are not having shelter of any bona fide guru in our life then our spiritual progress is going to be hindered it we cannot make rapid spiritual progress if we do not have shelter of a guru in kali yuga all right and Many times people say that, oh, well, there are so many fake gurus, you know, how I identify genuine gurus. I mean, that's, that's nonsense. There are fake politicians, there are fake actors, you know, there are fake musicians, you know, the, every area of life, you know, there are fake teachers who don't know anything. They just come to school and, you know, fool the students. So every area, every field, there are, you know, fake people and there are genuine, all right? So... Uh, let us not waste time by, you know, blacklisting the entire uh, community, spiritual community like this. Of course, that the media does, you know, they, they insert gurus and the guru shishya parampara. Because if they don't do that, then they will not get TRP. You know, nobody will go to see their uh, movies or, you know, their TV serials. Because if people start reading the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, then that's it. Because light and darkness cannot coexist. So this TV, movies, news and all this nonsense, this is darkness, illusion, you know, covering the reality with something which is not. And making you, con and convincing you that this is all. Yes, there's some problem in your country, in your state, in your area, this is happening, what will happen? People will die, people will be killed, you know, this will happen. That will all fake, unnecessary exaggerations which will never materialize. That's what the media does. And then when you uh, study books like the Bhagavad Gita or you study the Bible or the Quran or you study the Srimad Bhagavatam, then you know, oh, this is all nonsense. Because then you are illuminated. Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya. <laughs> the Guru illuminates you. Alright, and then you know that, oh, I am not this body actually. I am a spirit soul. So I don't have to be bogged up with every other nonsense which keeps happening in this material world. Because news is what basically, news is, you know, old things happening to new people. <laughs> the old same things which happened to somebody 20 years back is now again happening to somebody else, to another new person. That's what news is. So let us not waste time watching news or, you know, uh, by these movies and all this. Let us try to illuminate ourselves by taking enlightenment from sages like, Vyas De, Sukhdev Goswami and Sud Goswami, Shonak Rishi and the sages of Naimisharanya. And by that, we will be able to get that which we need the most. Right? We may want it or we may not want it. That's different. But we, we get what we need. We may not want that, but that's what we need. Right? So many times the example is given that the child uh, who is you know, sick, and he's very small. He doesn't like that medicine which the doctor gives. But 
that's the thing which he needs the most even if he doesn't want it so sometimes spiritual knowledge and spiritual lectures spiritual teachings are like karela oh my god there are so many heavy things which they say and your you know ego is pierced and you know your heart is torn totally which we don't like therefore but that is the thing which we need the most all right so that that that's the reason why we should uh, regularly hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. As Srimad Bhagavatam says, Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya. Nityam means it does not say Mandem Bhagavat Sevaya or Tuesday or you know, Wednesday <laughs> or you know, Weekendam Bhagavat Sevaya. It doesn't say like that. Or you know, Friday Nightam Sevaya. It doesn't say like that. Nityam means every day morning we should hear. This is the first thing we should do in the morning. All right. And if you do this, then our life will be transformed. Every day, one page you read, that's it. No garbage, no crap can enter your head. This is a challenge I'm giving. Open challenge to anybody. Just one page of the Bhagavatam every day. And you are done for the day. <laughs> Nothing of this world can touch you. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. And if you want a consultation from me, then you can go to the description section down to my website. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to it and watch videos from this playlist and the Bhagavad Gita playlist also. Thank you very much.